it's on. Now it's on, yes. Okay, so just let it be said that tonight's homework, there are three sections, one, three, one, four, and three, five. They're all on your calendar. The vast majority of your homework is in one, three. That's the most important section to focus on. One, four, and three, five we'll talk about for a few minutes, but one, three is the meat, right? Okay, so let's start with simple trig limits. So what's the first thing that we normally do when we have a limit? Plug in yeah. two. Plug in the number, right? Everyone plug that in and see what you get. Should I call this two plus three limits? Yes. So Hmm, secant of 2 pi thirds. I don't know the secant of 2 pi thirds. Lucky for me, I know the cosine of 2 pi thirds, yep. right? Which we've done now like 14 times today. What's the cosine of pi thirds? Okay, cosine of pi thirds is 1 half. 2 pi thirds are in the second quadrant, so it's negative 1 half. So if the cosine is negative 1 half, what's the secant? Negative 2. You just flip it. Does that make sense? And they use the same like properties too, like you can multiply by the, by the conjugate, like stuff like that. I'm sorry, I didn't. I just like they use the same properties as regular limits and as like multiply by the conjugate. So like when they get to the if you want to rationalize with roots, but I, we're not going to give you radicals with trig functions the limits today. That would be, yeah, it'd be slightly difficult. Okay. Just, just a bit. Just a little bit. All right. So another quick example. Limit as x approaches 5 from the left of tan pi x over 6. What do we do? Plug in a 4. Plug in a 4? But it's not the limit as x approaches 4. <coughs> left and right handed limits. Are you telling me that the limit as x approaches 5 from the left is the same as the limit as x approaches 4.99? I don't want to say that. Good, don't. So the limit as x approaches 5 from the left has to, if the limit exists, it has to equal the limit as x approaches 5 from the right, which has to equal the limit as x approaches 5, right? Duh. Right? Yeah. The only time that we plug in numbers close for left and right-handed limit is if we're approaching a vertical asymptote and we want to check which direction the function is heading. Yeah. Right? But any, I don't see a vertical asymptote at pi 6 here, so... I say let's just plug the number in. Sounds good. Good idea. Yeah. Um, Ooh, glad I could have helped. Yes, yes. Let's just plug the number in. Okay. Ooh, we need to know the tangent of 5 pi over 6. 30 degrees. The answer is 30 degrees? Okay, pi 6 is a 30 degree reference angle, sure. Okay. So, the tangent of pi over 6, or 30 degrees, is 1 over root 3, right? Or if you want to write root 3 over 3. Now, 5 pi over 6 is in which quadrant? 2. Second quadrant. Is tangent positive or negative there? Negative. It's negative. So, this is going to equal, and you could put either negative 1 over root 3 or negative root 3 over 3. I would take either one. Does that make sense? Good. Okay. So that's just straightforward limits. Just plug in the number, you get out the answer. They, by the way, when I say that you don't have to simplify in this class, and the same thing goes on the AP exam with the college board, you do, you cannot leave any answers in trigonometric form. 
meaning you can't leave tan of 5 pi 6. That will not be accepted. You have to actually tell me what it is, right? Okay. All right, not lang. Good. So there are three trig limit theorems that I am going to teach you today. They are important. You're going to have to learn them. They will be on your quiz tomorrow. Now, once you learn derivatives, you won't have to use these anymore because, of course, you can use our favorite limit um, method, which is L'Hopital, right? Yeah. But you can't use L'Hopital until you know the derivatives of the trig functions. So you are stuck using <coughs> the limit theorems today That's and tomorrow. So, limit theorem there? number one. <laughs> The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, if you plug in a 0, what do you get? More specifically. 0 over 0. 0 over 0 in limit world means keep going. keep going, the limit exists, right? But how do we know what the limit is? We can't rationalize this, right? There's nothing that you can't multiply, there's no conjugate to multiply by. So what do we do? Right? There's no fractions to simplify. Multiply the top and bottom by sine x. And how would that help you? Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm just. It's a good try. Throwing out ideas. Yeah. Brainstorming, right? One That's a good I try. One horn, fine okay. people eater. One eye, um, fine people eater. The way to actually find the value of what this limit is is to use a wonderful theorem called the squeeze theorem. Which we didn't learn. Which you haven't learned. I know. So I'm just going to tell you, though, that this answer is one. Woo! Yeah, thanks. Okay. That's very helpful. It, well, that's the, this theorem. You have to memorize this. You will be using this to do problems. Okay, step two. <laughs> Limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine x also equals 1. And trig limit theorem number three. The limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x equals 0. Aww. We are one off. Yep. You were close. <coughs> now, here's how you're going to see problems presented. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1. It doesn't have to just be x. You could actually have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 2x squared minus x over 2x squared minus x. And as long as when you plug in, you get 0 over 0, and these match, the limit is 1. But these have to match. So when we come across something like this, where you get sine, or limit as x approaches 0, of sine 2x over 3x, that's when we have a problem. So we have to get these to match. And can we change the two? We could use a double angle identity for sine. Pretend that we can't, though. So I should make this like a 5. Let's make it a 5x. That way we can't use the double angle identity. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, sine 5x over 3x. So now it's a whole new problem. So, um, so we need to make these two things match. Can I change the, I, the argument of the sign? No. No. no, I cannot pull that 5 out. It's tempting. Don't do it. All right? So instead, what I can do is I can work with the bottom. I can't make the top match the bottom, but I can make the bottom match the top. <laughs> What do I have to multiply 3 by five to get 5? 5 thirds. So here's what happens. If I multiply the bottom by 5 thirds, I have to also multiply the top by 5 thirds. Does that make sense? Word. Yeah? Okay. So if 
I multiply top and bottom both by 5 thirds, I'm, I'm okay, right? I haven't changed the problem. Nope. So what I end up with then, if I write it a little more neatly, is I get 5 thirds times sine 5x over 5x. <coughs> What's the limit as x approaches 0 5 thirds? 5 thirds. It's 5 thirds. Because 1 times 5 thirds is What's 1 What's the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 5x over 5x? One. One. Remember, limit of the product is the product of the limits. It's not like derivatives. Limits, you can just do the product and you got it. So 5 thirds times 1 is 5 thirds. That's your answer. All right, let's try another one. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you, quiet, calm down. I'm going to show you a slightly different way to do the same problem, just so, in case you're freaking out a little bit. All right, is anyone confused? Yes. Yes? Okay. Let me show you here. I'll do it. I'll do it. So, suppose we have the limit, I'll do almost the exact same problem, of sine 7x over 4x. Here's another way to think of it. This 4... I can kind of just move that over like that. Does everyone agree that this and this are the same? Yep. Yes? I need, I have a 7x here, I want a 7x here. I can't just put a 7 on the bottom, right? But if I multiply top and bottom by 7, then I'll have an equivalent fraction. So if I multiply <coughs> top and bottom by 7, then I get, then I'm good. Does that make sense? Jillian, I lost you. Um, yeah, you did. Um, okay. Okay. Just, um, the, how you make the 7 go, like it was x over 4 and then... Alright, this is actually 1 over 4. Yeah, yeah, 1 over 4. Right. And then I want a 7 down here. Do you understand why I want a 7? Yeah. Because I want these to match. Right. But if I'm going to multiply, say I have the fraction 2 thirds and I want an equivalent fraction, right? I can't just multiply the bottom by 7. I have to multiply top and bottom by the same number, and then I get an equivalent <coughs> fraction. So if I want the bottom to have a 7, I have to also multiply the top by 7. Okay. Right? So I can do it like this. Um, I don't know where to put the other 7. I, I have to multiply top and bottom by 7. That's why I thought it would be nicest to put the 7 here. Still lost you. Okay, wait. How about this? How about this? How about this? times 7 over 7. Right, right, yeah. Okay, okay, good. So now I have, I'm going to keep this 7 with the fraction, and I'm going to put this 7 over with this guy. Oh, okay. Really? Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, here's what happens then. <coughs> so now this, the limit is 7 fourths, and this limit is 1. And I just set up with seven points. So is it always going to be like that with problems? No, because sometimes like they can throw you problems <coughs> where it's kind of cutesy fraction things and it doesn't quite work so so nicely. Um, you'll see when you do your homework tonight. Now they might throw one where you don't have to do really any finagling. Finagling? Yeah, that's a math term. Okay, finagling. so for this one. What do I what do I need to do to make it look like one of my limit theorems? Just pull out a three, right? So I get so it's just three times zero. Okay, guys, tonight's homework one three is the only section that's actually on your quiz. 1, 4, continuity, just remember that a function is discontinuous when you divide by 0. So if you need to know where tangent, cotangent, secant, or cosecant are undefined, that's where you divide by 0. So like tangent, sine over cosine, so wherever cosine is 0, tangent is undefined, right? Cosecant, 1 over sine, so wherever sine is 0, cosecant is undefined. <laughs>
It is still running. Let me turn it off. Okay, thank you.